Bagaimana rasanya hidup tanpa aplikasi ponsel? I do almost everything on apps at this point. Um, I'm looking for a job, so I'm using LinkedIn. I'm calling an Uber right now um, on Facebook, Instagram, like all the time. It feels like yesterday that the iPhone came out, and it feels like yesterday that the App Store launched. I think it's amazing. It makes me feel really old because um, I still remember, like, you know, not having apps on a cell phone when they were just phones um, and flip phones and texting and cameras were basically as good as it got. Memang app baru ada selama 10 tahun terakhir. The phrase "there's an app for that" uh, just became so popular, and, and it's led our expectations to change. We really do expect there to be an app for solving most of our problems in our daily lives, and that simple expectation has created just an entire economy of gigs, of new innovations, of new services. Lewat App Store untuk iPhone dan Google Play untuk ponsel berbasis Android, pengguna tinggal mengunduh, kadang dengan membayar, sehingga dunia berada dalam genggaman. Tapi sebagian analis menilai aplikasi smartphone dalam wujudnya sekarang ini sekedar batu loncatan. Selanjutnya, pengguna akan menuntut semakin banyak fitur yang dipanggil bukan dengan memencet smartphone, melainkan dengan perintah lisan. Ini mulai terlihat dengan popularitas berbagai asisten pribadi virtual seperti Siri untuk Apple dan Alexa untuk Amazon. Alexa. What we're looking at is a world where you're not clicking on things or touching things, but you're only talking to things, where there's no interface, where you're simply talking to technology as you would to a person. So that remote, it's an even more frictionless way to access applications. Sebagai pelopor penjualan aplikasi, Apple masih termasuk yang paling diuntungkan dengan penjualan app yang pada kuartal pertama tahun ini menembus 33 miliar dolar. Dari Washington DC, Nova Purwadi, VOA.